morning. Good morning. It's a blessing to see you in the house of the Lord. It is still summertime and we have people gallivanting all over. That's all right as long as they find a way back home. And uh, so we're going to pray for them. It's glad to see that some of them have already found their way back home from church. And uh, we're glad that you're with us this morning. I have several things to uh, mention. Lynn and Sandy's not here. They're moving their daughter back to Greenville. And so uh, I'm the Lone Ranger because Keith and, and Liz is gone also. So just let me read the Sunday school report if I could. Uh, yeah. We have 45 members present, 16 contacts, and so a total of 45 of them have no visitors. Our number continues to be down. Uh, I'm sure COVID has a lot to do with that. We just can't get back in the routine, but we hope to go forward from here. If you're visiting with us this morning, we welcome you. You take a minute to fill out a visitor's card and take the pen and put it in your pocket, and we're happy that you're with us this morning. Uh, we want to welcome all those joining us by way of Facebook. We appreciate you being here also. <coughs> I have a couple of cards I'd like to read. May you receive abundant blessings in return for the special way you expressed his love. Thank you, church family, for the blessings with the, with the beautiful wheelchair wrap. And that is from Miss Linda World. I also have a thank you card. Uh, and this is to the missions committee for the Bibles donated in Jack Horn's uh, honor. I wish to thank the missions committee of Providence Baptist Church for the donation of 40 Bibles through the Gideon ministry for the dis uh, to be distributed in Jack Horn's memory. I'm so glad to be a part of that ministry. God bless you, and that is from Miss Harry. Okay. Let me mention a couple of announcements in the bulletin. Now, I hope I don't forget everything. I probably will. But if at the end of the service I forget to pass out these uh, officers for the next coming ch year, church year, Please throw a rock or go up and hit me in the head or something, you know. This is your opportunity, okay? You got, you got a free lane. But anyway, I need to pass these out, one per family, and they will be voted on according to the bylaws next Sunday, okay? So I'm going to do that at the end of the service, okay? I also need to mention, some of the ladies uh, leave their pocketbooks out of the sanctuary during Sunday school. We have security, and not a problem, but just kind of close them up and secure them if you would, okay? We, we don't want to be responsible for them, so if your pocketbook's sitting out here, you know, I'm not going to go through them, but somebody might, okay? So just keep that in mind. I want to remind you of the upcoming events, this is August, and so we have baptism at the river. We're also going to have baptism that morning here. And then at 4 p.m., we have baptism at the river, and we're going to have a great time. We will have a uh, a little refreshments to go along and a little entertainment to go along with the service. So plan on being a part of that. And uh, uh, it's going to be a great time. And just pray for good weather and a little water, I guess. As long as rain, river's probably high. It won't take us long to get in and get out, probably. Fifth Sunday singing is going to be at Fellowship, August 29th. Please plan on bringing uh, finger food. And then you will hear more as time approaches for September. We're going to have revival and homecoming. And that's going to be September the 19th. I'll tell you more about that later on. Are there any other announcements? Women have a mission Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Okay. Right. You hear that, ladies? Yes. All right. All right. No other announcements. I start preaching. Come on up. Here. Oh, by the way, we have someone who's in church for the very first time. Little Hope Twitty. And she's back in the nursery, but I got to see I didn't see any eyes. I guess she's got them. <laughs> all closed up, but we're happy to hope. Hope you hope you get to hear your preaching for the very first time. Yeah, if that yeah. baby's uh, asleep still, when I start preaching, pinch her and wake her up. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yes, sir. I got one. Yes, sir. It's my wife's birthday. <laughs> we didn't get to say during Sunday school, but you I just got a birthday today. Yeah. Happy birthday to you.
<laughs> and being part of worship, you got to put money in, in the kid. Y'all come on.
We have a long prayer list this morning. I'm going to try to pronounce all these names correctly. Uh, Abby Burkett, we'll continue to pray for her. That's Cheryl Price's daughter. Uh, Norbert Miller, the family of Charlie Dykes. Miss Georgianne, who has a hurt arm this morning, need to pray for her. Brother Larry Wanamaker, uh, pastor of uh, the Methodist Church. Can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, pray for him this morning. He's not feeling well, but has some problems. Eula and Wendy Williamson, Charles Branham, Kathy Dykes, uh, Mary, I'm sorry, Kathy Sykes, Mary Sheely, Trudy Barr, Kelly McClinton, Brother Jim Davis, who's having surgery this week. Robert and Faye's children, one has cancer, one suffering with COVID. Carrie Morris, Marilyn Coley, Debbie Phillips, Danny Oliver, and the family of Herbert Miller and Greg Wiles. Long list. Let's bow together and pray. Father, today we come before your throne asking first of all that you would cleanse us of our sin. We have gathered in this place to worship you. But we know, Lord, that our worship will not be pure, it will not be acceptable, Lord, unless we put our sins and self on the altar. We do that this morning. We want nothing to hinder our worship. We're here to meet you, dear God. We had a trying week. We had obstacles in our way. But, Lord, we're here today in your sanctuary, a place set apart for us, dear God, to honor the Lord that we love. Minister to us with your goodness and grace this day. I pray, Father, for those who are traveling. Give them mercies, Lord, and let them find their way safely home. I pray, Father, for those, dear God, locked in a hospital room. I pray, Lord, for those, dear God, who uh, are suffering in any way, that your hand of mercy will touch them and heal them according to your divine will. I pray this morning, Lord, that you would just minister to us with your goodness and grace. I ask you, Lord, to speak to the hearts and lives of everyone in the pew, Lord, from the front to the back. Lord, if there's any room in our lives to move up, if there's something, Lord, that you convict us of in this service, may we have the courage to walk forward and make it right with you. Give us that ability this day. Have your will, Lord Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. should not be astonished at how well God orchestrates everything and puts it all together. He's done it so many times for me when things were just all awry in my life. But our group sang in um, Cameron this morning at a little church there, Shady Grove. Their services are at 9 o'clock. Their pastor, Creedstone, Why Fear? Amen. We sang three songs down there that fit perfectly, and he and I never contacted each other whatsoever. Amen. When Miss Georgie called me yesterday and said, I need you to direct in the morning the song that we were supposed to sing under her direction, I didn't feel too comfortable with it because I didn't know it very well. We had guests coming over last night, and I thought, wow, what can we sing? And it was just going round and round in my head, and I grabbed the iPad, and I said, hey, we've gone over this, and they know it pretty good. Sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. Now, how much more orchestration, and I don't know what Kenneth's going to preach on this morning, but it amazes me how God puts everything all together. Amen. All together. That we just don't need to fear as long as we choose our everything is better. Choir hasn't been over this but once this morning and once a long time ago say a prayer for us, but we're going to sing it to the glory of God because we believe it. Amen. Amen. Let's start. 
And so we talk about those things which cannot be shaken, and those are the things that remain, the things that cannot be shaken. Amen. Lord, I ask that you bless the preaching and the reading of your word this day. In, in, in the Lord's name and spirit, we, we ask this, and, and all people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to talk to you this morning about five things, friends, that cannot be shaken. First of all, God cannot be shaken. The Bible states that God is omnipotent. He is unchangeable. He is the first cause of all things. Go back in the beginning of Genesis and read the first four words. In the beginning, God. Just sit for a minute. Let that sink in and understand that God has everything under control. He cannot be shaken. He cannot be deterred in any way. He is the creator of the stars, the sun, the moon, and all the planets and all the universes around. And not only did he create it, this, friends, but in his genius, he put everything in motion. He created all things that are past, all things that are present, and all things that are in the future. Hebrews 13 says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But here's the, here's the thing about it. In all of his greatness, he invites every human being to know him as personal father. You see, the Bible talks in the creation time. He had a name called Elohim. That's the creator God. But then, friends, later on in the book of Exodus, he said, don't call me Elohim. Call me Jehovah. I want to know you in a personal way. And so today, brothers and sisters, the God of all creation, I can come into his presence and I can say, good morning, Father. Thank you, Father, for your love and blessing. I have that relationship with him because I happen to be his child. Amen. There was a parade going through the street and the Roman emperor was riding up on his little, little chariot. And a little child ran out and they said, no, don't approach the emperor, don't approach the emperor. He said, I'm not approaching the emperor, I'm approaching my father. You see, the emperor happens to be his father. And so the, the creator of all the world, friends, is my heavenly father. I have a relationship with him that I'm told by Jesus that we come to him and says, my father who art in heaven. Amen? Amen. That just means, brothers and sisters, that he has everything under control. If you read in the Bible, the zeal of God, he's not just some white-haired man that's just sitting up there with a walking stick, you know, and he's so old because the world is so old looking down and he, he can't make heads or tails of things. Friend, the Bible says he's enthusiastic. He can, he, he, he can out aerobic any of us. He can jump as high or higher than any of us, and he's active. He's not just sitting on the throne like an old white-haired man. He's full of zeal. He's full of enthusiasm. His adrenaline is flowing continuously because he's active, friends, in the hearts and lives of his people and in all the things of this world that has been put in motion. Amen? Amen. He has an eternal plan for you and I. And friends, that plan is what you and I need to be about. Amen? I was going to write that scripture down. It's been said many times over Jeremiah. He knows our, the plan that he has put in motion for you and I. So God cannot be shaken. No matter what goes on around us, God can't be shaken. Another thing that cannot be shaken is the word of God. Psalm 119.89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Isaiah 48, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Amen? Amen. Just recently, I'm talking in a matter of weeks, did you know they discovered way over there in ancient Mesopotamia, which is the old Babylon, Iran, did you know they discovered a cylinder and they opened it up and there was the plans, a diagram of the Tower of Babel. <laughs> what about that? Did y'all read about that? It was in the news. And here's what's really good. The scientists were amazed. <laughs> You see, they don't never can connect the dots. That don't amaze me. I've already known about that for years and years and years that that tower was there because the Bible said it was. You see, the scientists tried to say it was just a fairy tale. It's just something that people created to make a reason for other languages. No, 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 brothers and sisters. The Tower of Babel was real, and it doesn't matter whether the scientists discovered that cylinder or not. I just happened to believe in it long before that because it was written in 
the holy word of God. Amen. You see, the Bible came down. I mean, God came down and he cursed the nation because of this tower and he sent them all in all different languages. Now, the Bible talks a lot about things that are real. And one of the things it talks about being real is the curse. You ever heard of the curse? Huh? Right over there in Genesis, he, in Genesis chapter 3, first thing he cursed was the snake. Remember what he told the snake? Because you've deceived the woman, the devil entered the snake, you're going to crawl on your belly for the rest of your life. And for the rest of your life, everything that you are going to eat is going to be dirt. That's his life. You know why? Because it was cursed by God. The Bible also says that the earth is cursed. It grows thorns and briars. There's more thorns and briars than there are good stuff. No more fruits. It's grown up. And you plant a garden, there come the briars. There come the briars. And that's because God also cursed man. And he said, dear, you're going to have to labor. You're going to have to have the sweat of your brow to get anything to produce in this earth. And so he cursed the earth and he cursed man. But then he got to the woman and he cursed her twice. Do you know that? He said, first of all, I'm cursing you in childbirth. And uh, if I give birth to a woman, no one talk, or to a baby, you know what I'm talking about. I've never done it. But I can tell you this, I've heard some screams and hollers like you would never believe. Why? Because there's pain in childbirth. But that's not the only curse that God gave the woman. Because he also curses that for the rest of your life, you will be subject to the man. Oh, my word. And by the way, in, in this modern day, that's the reason that Baptists do not have women preachers today. Because they were the first in the fall. And the Bible cursed them instead for the rest of their lives. They would be subject to the man. I know that don't fit well. Especially in the 21st century. But listen. God's word is settled forever. Amen. Amen. Some people say, well, why do the men act like they do? Why do people do such bad things? Because they're depraved. They're totally depraved away from God. Their heart and mind is full of the imagination of evil. And so they do what their mind comprehends. That's what happens. And then the Bible says this, though. And you can pre you, you all do a Bible study on this. What the Bible says about salt. Jesus looked at his followers. He didn't say, I'm the salt. He said, you're the salt of the earth. Now, that means, brothers and sisters, that we have a purpose. That Christians are supposed to salt the earth. When the earth is not salted with goodness, you know what happens? Evil prevails. So when we complain about all the evil in the world, maybe it's the failure of Christians to be the salt that God intended us to be. Right. If we're not the salt that God wants us to be, then evil will prevail. Amen. We're cursed. But then the Bible says something else. It also says that salvation is real. Thank God for his salvation. And that little hole in this church in 1973 when I knelt down at the altar and said, Jesus, I want you in my heart. God saved me. Amen. Now, you don't have to have an experience like Kenneth Lott. You don't have to go down to the hole in this altar and, uh, and kneel and pray. But friend, you have to have the same salvation experience that I had. It has to be real. If it's not real, then there's something missing in your relationship. Because the Bible specifically says that he wants to save every individual. And he will save every individual who will call on him. Then there's something else that's real too. Judgment. Oh, no, no, preacher. That, you know, that's, that's the stone ages. You know, we, we don't believe in judgment anymore. God is law. He's law, law, law. Just, you know, he's not going to, I hope you're right. I really do. I hope you're right. But I don't think you are. And you know why? Because there's one thing that God said he would never ever do. And that's go against his word. Okay? He'll go against you. He'll go against your feelings. He'll go against your philosophy. But he'll never go against his word. Because his word cannot be shaken. Amen? <laughs> then the sun cannot be shaken. Oh, brothers and sisters, the son of the living God, his character cannot be shaken. We live in a day and time when you turn on the news and, oh, they got these stories about Jesus that they've conjured up. Well, you know him and Mary Magdalene had an affair. Y'all knew that, right? Had love, child. 
That's why she was first at the tomb, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No friends. The Bible says that he was tempted in all points. Now he might have been tempted that way, but he was tempted without sin. Amen. His character was not violated. When somebody starts to run for office, the first thing their opponents do, they send people out, go find some dirt, dig up some dirt. That's what they try to do to Jesus, try to dig up dirt, but they can't find any. The sinless Son of God. Here's the witnesses to it. Judas, here's what they said, I have portrayed innocent blood. The centurion said, truly this was the Son of God. The demon cried, this is the Son of the Most High. John said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The angel said, unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior who is Christ the Lord. God himself said, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. The Son of God can't be shaken. His power cannot be shaken. Amen? Amen. We, they just finished the Japanese Olympics. And they were showing some of the sites. You know, there's a tremendous Buddhist temple over there. Well, in 1495, a tidal wave came in and knocked that. It's 40 foot tall. Uh, a tidal wave came and knocked that Buddha down. And they wrote a story about it. The God who couldn't get up. That's what they said about it. Now, since then, they've got the statue back erected and you go in there and there's the Buddhist temple with all the Buddhist priests, you know, in the little white robe, walking around praying. But all oh, brothers and sisters, they're praying to a dead God. We have a God that got up. Amen. Amen. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He stood up in the grave and He's never sat down since. Amen. He's the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. His love can't be shaken. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He sent His Son. John 1.4 This is love, not that we loved Him, but that He loved us first. John 15.13 Greater love has no man than this to the man would lay down his life for his friends. You cannot find, friends, anybody else that would do for you and I what Jesus has done. Amen. Amen. There was a man wounded in the Civil War. He was about to lose his arm, and it didn't turn game green. The doctor came in and said, I can save your life, but I'm going to have to cut your arm off. He said, go ahead, doctor. So they took his arm off. The man got well. The doctor was about to leave. He said, you're well now. You can go home. He said, doctor, tell me what your name is. He said, that matters. He said, yes, it does. Tell me what your name is, because I want to tell my children about the man that saved my life. Friends, I want to tell you who saved my life. His name was Jesus. Amen. I was walking down the road to hell. Sin had my life, and he had some of you, brothers and sisters, and I would hate to see what sin would have done to me in 2021 had I not trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen. I wouldn't have the prestige and the esteem, the job that I have today if I'd have stayed in sin. And you would not be where you are today, friends, if the Lord Jesus Christ hadn't saved you. Amen. If you don't know what you would be, but I can promise you this, friends, it would be bad. It would be bad. He also doesn't waver or shake when it comes to his purpose. Luke 19, 10, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Some people say Jesus came to lay down a method for us to live. No, he came to die for you and I. Some say he came to this earth to set an example, to live by the Sermon on the Mount. No, 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 no. He came for the sole purpose of dying for the sins of the world. Amen. The little boy was working a jigsaw puzzle, and he couldn't get all the pieces together. But he discovered on the back of the jigsaw puzzle was the picture of a man. So he turned the puzzle over, and when he put the man in the middle and turned it back over, then all the pieces fit. Friends, that's the way you need to do it, or what you need to do today. If you get the man Jesus in your life, the rest of the pieces of your life will fit. Amen. He has to be in the center. When he gets in the center, all the questions that you can't have answered really won't matter anymore. It'll all be about Jesus. Amen? God's church cannot be shaken. Matthew 16, 18. The gates of hell will not prevent the church and the living God from going forward. It'll never fall because it has the 
the right foundation. Amen? Now, there's a lot of things that goes on today. People say, well, the church ain't perfect. Amen. It's made up of imperfect people. Did you know if you went to a, des a desert island today, wasn't nobody there but you and started a church, that church would not be perfect. Right. Because you would be in it. Yes, I know a lot of things. Sexual abuse, corruption, hearsay, all these things. The Lord Jesus Christ founded the church at Pentecost when he sent his spirit. And in Revelation 4, friends, when the end of time comes, he's going to call his church home. And the church is not going to waver in between times because the Lord is controlling it. Amen? Amen. Then the last thing that can't be shaken is God's wonderful kingdom. Pharaoh was a great king. Had a tremendous nation. The only thing you can find in, in that nation today is a bunch of tombstones. That's what the pyramids are. Oh yeah, King Tut. They, they put his body in a U, not a U-Haul truck, an 18 wheeler, haul around the country. People stand in line for hours to walk in there and look at a dead king. But yet, brothers and sisters, they won't take an hour out of their time to come to church to hear about a living king. Right, yeah. You explain that to me. That's the way the world is. Depraved. Alexander the Great was a great man. Had a tremendous kingdom. But one day it fell. Because all of man's kingdoms fell. Napoleon conquered the world. Now the only place you can read about Napoleon is the history books. One day, brothers and sisters, America could fall. I love America. I salute the fact that I get cold chills up my spine every time I think about being born in a nation where I'm free to love and worship God and travel anywhere I want to. As long as I got gas in my tank, I can get in my truck today and I can travel to California as long as I got gasoline. But listen to me this morning. Listen good. My citizenship is not in the United States of America. My citizenship is in heaven. Amen. My citizenship in heaven can't be shaken. It can't be taken away. The reason that one day, by faith, I knelt at an old rugged cross and I trusted the King of Kings to save me and to come into my life. Do you know him today? In a world that's going to pieces, you better have something that's steadfast and true. My anchor is in the most solid rock. What about yours? <clears throat> What's the name of that song? Only solid rock is saved. Huh? No, huh? Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> the internet's slow. Well, I guess we might as well sing the solo then. Get up here. We're going to sing that song. Y'all stand together with me.
stop this for next week, all right? Well, I mean, why don't we just put some copies back there and anybody who wants one can get it. Well, I think everybody should have it. Look at especially since we're going to be voting on that up a lot. Alright, copies will be passed out next week.